this. Uh, there's a dance party going on. Um, so uh, last year on the boat, um, Nora Jameson did a reading, which was amazing. Uh, and sadly, she um, is not here like uh, she was originally scheduled to be. But I, uh, I really, I hadn't gone to a lot of readings, and I really loved like listening to authors read their own work. And um, I wanted to give it a shot because we've had lots of um, house concerts, but we've never had, or rather, shadow concerts. We've never had a shadow reading before, as far as I know. And so I asked my uh, my righty friends here if they would help me, and they all did. And I'm really excited because I have no idea what they're doing. Uh, I know what Jill's doing, but other than that, I, I'm not I'm not positive. So um, that's great. It'll be a surprise for me. Uh, so. Uh, first writer up is Melanie, uh, and Melanie had uh, stories prepared, and her computer didn't cooperate. So these stories are brand new as of I don't know this afternoon, <laughs> and so yay! It's going to be really exciting. Um, this is very exciting. I wrote this story today because I was going to read you guys some old crap and yeah, none of the old crap is on this computer so I was like, oh, I guess I better write something. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, so this story is called, I wrote this story yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote this story yesterday. I wrote it in my head, all in one sitting, and with little to no revisions. I wrote it while you were talking about planes or jets or something that I wasn't that interested in. Planes are pretty boring for me at the best of the times, but I like the way your face changes when you talk about them, so I ask you questions sometimes. Your eyes get wider and rounder when you're excited. Sort of like a kitten, but that feels weird to say because I definitely do not feel toward kittens the way I feel toward you. The story you are telling is about being a young cadet of some kind and how much the ladies loved you then. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be impressed that you were such a ladies' man in your younger days, or sympathetic that those years are apparently behind you. I'm vaguely offended at the suggestion of either. The story I'm telling in my head is about the two of us walking in a park with your dog. It is bright and warm, but not oppressively so, and Athena is bounding gently ahead of us. The trees are evenly spaced, and the grass freshly manicured, and it smells like ocean and cotton candy. There's nowhere in this town that looks like this park, but this story is make-believe, and I can set it anywhere I like. In a restaurant with half-empty plates of fried food sitting between us, you are telling me about the time at camp when all the ladies challenged you to undo their bras with one hand. I've heard this story before, and barely listened the last time you told it, <laughs> but this time I focus really hard on the sound of your voice. The words you're using don't matter, but I like the way your voice speeds up and stumbles when you're enjoying talking. In the park in my story, in my head, you say things like, your nose is the most adorable nose out of any nose I have ever seen. And isn't it fucked up that Casey Affleck can beat up his girlfriend and still win an Oscar? <laughs> in my story, we sit on the grass and talk about social politics and the importance of libraries in building informed citizens. <laughs> In your story, you talk about that one girl who surprised you with the front closure bra. <laughs> Sometimes you pause and stare at me expectantly, and I know that is my cue to smile and nod. Hmm, I say, hoping I sound interested. I think for a moment that you're about to ask me how my day was, or what I worked on earlier, but then I realize that is the fictional you, the one that exists only in my mind and on this paper. You turn to stories of Warhammer. And I return to the park with you and Athena and, quite unexpectedly, Beyonce. <laughs> the three of us, four if you count Athena, smile at each other fondly, occasionally reaching out to hold hands or gently touch. Beyonce and I start to sing Diva, and you are delighted by our ridiculous, off-tune attempt at harmonizing. In the story that is my life, you rarely enjoy listening to me sing along with Beyonce, often choosing to leave the room when it happens. But this is my story, and in my story, you appreciate the enthusiasm and dedication I bring to the chorus. Yes, you appear to be agreeing. A diva is a female version of a hustler. <laughs> 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 
So lost am I in the joy of singing, it takes me a moment to realize there's silence at our table. The you in my story is fading back into my mind, while the you in the restaurant comes more sharply into focus. I let go of you and Athena and Beyonce, and try to acclimate to the restaurant and the eyebrow you're lifting to indicate a question. Sorry, what? I asked. I couldn't hear you. I said, do you want to get out of here? Desperately, I smiled. Is there a title for that? I wrote this story yesterday. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 So uh, the other thing I want to read for you is not fiction. I was at Emerald City Comic Con before I came on the boat. And while I was there, I was on a panel where we did lightning reviews of like indie comics and zines and stuff like that. Um, and since I don't have any of the stuff I was going to read for you, I thought maybe I would read some of those reviews for you. They're like lightning fast and hopefully kind of funny. The downside, ooh, geez, this is like going automatically. Okay. So there's a PowerPoint presentation that went along with them, just so you can see pictures of the zines and stuff. And so I will hold up my laptop and show them to you, and we'll see how that goes. And I will try to keep pace to the timing. They're like 15 seconds per review. That should be exciting. Okay. Miss Katonic you. My friend wrote this webcomic. It's a complete story now, so if you're a fan of binging media, you can feel free to read this. It's a Cthulhu-y college story, and look, I don't really know that much about Cthulhu, but the art is cute and the jokes are funny. <laughs> oh, I'll go with you. Okay, so it's so pretty, you guys. So very pretty. Do you see this? I don't know if you see this. Um, every issue of this scene is hand applique with little rhinestone thingies and it's so adorable and I'm totally 100% here for that kind of dedication to your craft <laughs> that you were just going to spend time attaching appliques and stickers. Oh, fuck you box, this is by Katie Cook. Okay, so Katie Cook draws adorable comics and a few years ago she did these watercolor doodles of my cats and I got them tattooed onto my arm and I knew I could trust Katie Cook to do A plus doodles of my cats because I read this comic and it proves that Katie Cook perfectly understands cats. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is the Life Unlucky. It's a series of rhyming couplets that starts out kind of wacky, and then it turns to the dark and morbid. And it's kind of like if uh, Edward Gorey, is that right, Edward Gorey? And Dr. Seuss had a baby, but then they wrote a book for that baby to read for entertainment purposes. <laughs> <laughs> ghost Girl is really cool. The best part of this comic, there's one panel in Ghost Girl where the ghost goes to a beach, and she's like, look at all these people being alive. So basic. <laughs> I really like a judgmental ghost, so that's really cool. Uh, cats I could live without, and also dogs I could live without. And these two go together. Uh, when? Okay, about 20 of those kinds. Oh, excuse you, Carter Fawcett. These monsters are not dumb. They are hecking adorable. One of the monsters looks like he's going to a party. Have fun at the party, you adorable monster. <laughs> now it's cats I could live without and dogs I could live without. Hannah Fisher. So these two go together because they're kind of the same thing. They're drawings of cats and dogs that the author could live without. And I feel like Hannah Fisher probably really likes cats and dogs, but her bar for the ones that she could live without is kind of low. And who doesn't like cats that get all up in your face and giant dogs that don't know how giant they are? Oh, yeah. Oh, Hugh, this one is so pretty. This is very different for me. I tend not to enjoy things that don't have words. I really like words, but this comic is so pretty and the story is so sweet and I can't help but love it. The comic's mostly black and white, but it also uses small amounts of color in really lovely ways, so you should check it out. It's called Hugh. Uh, death came for the small children. Oh, this is nice. So I'm doing research with artists, and I was talking to an artist friend of mine about how I want to interview people who just worked in illustrations and don't work in text. And she was like, you're crazy because artists also use text in the same way that they use like, shape and colors. And I feel like this comic really illustrates a way that you can use text as like a beautiful art. Oh, yeah, Untitled. Okay, so this is by Annie Gaines, who I know on like a panel that I did last year at Emerald City Comic Con, and she's an artist. And this comic is really cool because it reminds me of home, and it has pictures of mountains, and I really like that. <laughs> The unusual death of Gregory Briggs. Okay, so remember the time a nurse's aide ran into some dude on the street and he got stuck in her car windshield and she drove home and left him moaning in her garage instead of taking him to the hospital where he would have been successfully treated and then he died and she and her boyfriend tried to cover it up because they made like three movies out of that and episodes of CSI, Law and Order and Fargo and then this comic. <laughs> oh, about running. So, okay, two things. This book is about running, which is something I never do, but it's also about running. It's not about running in the way you think it's about running. Also, the texture of this comic is really cool. It's like a really soft paper, and it's bound with ribbon, so I really like that. It's very unique. Holding this comic in my hand makes me feel emotions. 
Oh, the yearbook office. You guys should know about the yearbook office, right? So once yeah. per week for a short while, I got a newsletter of assorted writings by amazing people on the topic of staying alive, and life was good. The experiment is over, but you can still find the results on the internet. The project was won by the wonderful Alice Lee, who once bought me a pina colada for my birthday, and I miss her. Oh, Square. Okay, so a lot of things about this. Uh, this is about this artist's life in Japan, and the truth is I really don't like this comic very much because <laughs> I think this guy, the artist who does this comic, is kind of a jerk, but I really like comics where they talk about what it is life to, like to live in different places other than Canada, where I'm from. <laughs> oh, over at Cumber, this is another thing you should know that is done by a sea monkey, and it seems really weird to call this comic normal because it's populated with elves and dwarves, and it's hilarious and sometimes insightful, but there isn't really a good way to finish that sentence. Um, this is not a normal comic, a weird and delightful comic, but not a normal comic. Oh, roll up the rim. So I found this comic at a comic book store in Vancouver, and it was free, so of course I took it, and I really liked Tim Hortons. Um, Tim Hortons is a Canadian coffee shop. Um, and there's lots of puns, and it's really cool, and you can find it on the internet, so I really recommend that you look up Roll of the Ram by Pun 2-3. Oh, The Last Mile. Okay, so this is a comic about the death of the author's father, so it's much less funny than the other comics that I've been reviewing. Um, it's weirdly personal about me, because I have a thing about people whose fathers have died, so this comic is kind of sad, and it makes me cry, but it's really sweet. You should check it out. The Last Mile. Oh, 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 The Complete Bad Boyfriend by Katie So. So it's a collection of uh, comics about a really awful boyfriend, and my favorite thing about this comic is that there's a doodle on the inside cover that Katie So did for me of a super hideous cat, but also a note that says that I'm super cute, and so I'm really into the fact that Katie So thinks I'm super cute. <laughs> oh, hey girl, hey, this is another one by Katie So. I got this for like, there's, it cost like one dollar at the Vancouver Comic Arts Festival, and so I bought several copies and just started handing it out to women that I know that are super awesome. Um, and I need to stock up because I'm all out. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done.